Hey, all you bloody little blighters, I'm Bill Bauer, and this is what I think of the game Bioshock Infinity. Oh, Bioshock Infinite, the long-awaited indirect sequel to the critically acclaimed 2007 original. And before you say anything, that 2010 piece of shit does not count as a fucking Bioshock game. Just like the original, Bioshock Infinite starts off not too different. You're a lone man who shows up at a lone lighthouse sitting in the middle of the sea, and after going inside you make the bad choice of taking an unexpected ride to a dystopia. The only difference this time around is you're visiting a city in the sky called Columbia, instead of Rapture under the sea. You're tasked with finding a girl named Elizabeth, who the scared whites of the floating city have taken to calling The Lamb. That's right, this game has strong ties to religion, which is shown off in both its glorious accepting redeeming form and its horrifying bigoted lynching form. I found it absolutely magical how polarizing subjects like religion and politics were put on display in enough forms to undoubtedly piss off just about anyone at one point or another. It was enough to make tears roll from my eyes to see religion trumpeted as the saving grace of mankind and then made synonymous with cultism. It was wondrous to see conservative politics defined as racism and white supremacy while progressives were mere anarchists bent on overthrowing the system. Honestly, the effort that went into trying to make sure everyone was pissed off at some point touched me in a way no other game has. Back on the subject of story though, Infinite gave up the high level of hands-off interactive storytelling from the original for a more traditional fleshed out example of just telling you what's going on. I wasn't forced to watch any gore awful cinematics, but they still found it necessary to lock my character rigid like a statue and force me to look in one direction more than once. Sure, this method of storytelling works, but it only took me out of the game. I mean, Jesus Christ, it pisses me the fuck off when I'm forced to look at someone across from me in the elevator, and you take away the option for me to just turn around, stare at the corner, and hop up and down. Losing that control disappoints me. I was upset, significantly unhappy, and ready to whinge and moan to the world about it over the world wide web. And then, the ending happened. Before I get to that though, I should probably cover how the game played first. One of the great things I love about Bioshock Infinite is how despite being a first person shooter, it absolutely denies so many major tropes and rules about how to be a successful first person shooter. In other words, how to be a boring shit coloured military shooter with over reliance on goddamn multiplayer. Even though it defies those tropes, it's not perfect. One thing that fucking pissed me off was the inclusion of a regenerating shield. It's bad enough that shooters today let gamers be pussies by making the character you played near invincible. To see the Bioshock series slip further into the fucked up realm of unchallenging is disappointing to say the least. Thank god that the game didn't just dip though, and instead did something no one thought could be done right. Give you a bloody follower that's helpful for the entire game. Not too long into your adventure, you gain Elizabeth, a girl who follows you around as your constant companion. What's most unexpected though, is how she isn't a nuisance, hindrance, or just a plain old fucking pain in the arse. Elizabeth, aside from being an interesting character, is actually the first goddamn useful companion I've ever had in a fucking game. When I start shooting, she's never in my way. When I run out of ammo, she throws me more bullets. When I need cover, she's there to use her crazy powers and phase in a pile of crates I can use to duck behind. Seriously, now that I've experienced what a good follower can be like in a game, all I gotta say is other developers need to stop being bloody wankers, because now everyone knows companions and followers can be done right. This isn't to say that Elizabeth is perfect though, for some fucking reason she still liked to run in front of me when I was just trying to get from point A to point B, or when I was just looking around. Game breaking? No, but still fucking annoying as hell, and I'll be damned if I'll let anything wrong with any title get by me. And while I'm at it, I'll say that Elizabeth resupplying you is great, but feeling like you have bottomless ammo takes away a lot of challenge. It also sets you up for a bit of a fall later whenever she goes on a brief hiatus and can't help you out. But enough about the few minor problems with how the game plays, let's get on to how the fucking thing looks. Oh, the visual fidelity of Bioshock Infinite is quite a sight to behold. 
I don't think I've ever been so awestruck as I was during the introduction when you're entering the city of Columbia for the first time. If there was ever an amazing example of how to just wash over someone with a game's visual aesthetic to immerse them in the world, this is it. Of course, that leads into another major problem that Infinite has. Everything else looks like shit compared to the introduction. The overall aesthetic holds firm, but topping the incredible gaudy and frankly grandiose look of the Columbia Welcome Center just isn't fucking possible. But bitching about that is like pissing about having a butler instead of a maid. What does it matter as long as you're being waited on? There's another thing about the game's design. The people look much better than they did in the original. I can't tell you how happy I am not to see the oddly shaped and freakishly unhuman splice as a rapture anymore. To be quite frank, it's much more comforting to see and kill tons of religious and political zealots just because they're easier to look at. There's not much else to say though. As much as I hate to admit it, the game looks great and I can complain or even nitpick about even the art direction. So with that said, let's get back to the game's story, my bloody spoiler-free review of its ending, and the conclusion for this goddamn review. It's no secret that the Bioshock series is heavily dependent on its story to be a good game. All throughout Infinite, I was waiting for the big twist, the monolithic what the fuck moment, and as I closed in on the end of the game with no plot upheaval in sight, I gave up on the story being better than the original. But then, what to my wondrous eyes should appear, but M. Night Shyamalan saying, What a twist! in my ear. Not long after the last battle was over, I was treated to a twist that nearly bowled me over. Both an easter egg and a revelation rolled into one, and just as the twist ended, I was delivered another one. An amazing event that made sense of the strange that was laced throughout the entire fucking game. And just as more questions began to appear, more truth in the form of twist was jammed into my ear. It was truth about you, about Booker DeWitt, and what had brought you on your Colombian trip. I was stumbled and staggered, amazed by the writing, but the game was not over, there were more twists in hiding. When the ending was done, and the credits did roll, the twists made me speechless, they were out of control. I had doubted the game, and the irrational crew, then when my guard was down, came the deadly combo of 32. Speechless I was, and amazed by its grandeur, which is why still today, one in moan I can note, for Bioshock Infinite is the best in every goddamn spot.